Hello and welcome Mountaineer fans to another edition of The Takeaway here on WVMetroNews.com. Justin Hoff alongside Alan Taylor. And what a win it was for West Virginia this past weekend. 30-21 to over the number 11 Oklahoma State Cowboys. A shocker, a stunner, especially with the fact that uh, they were skunked seven days previous to Maryland. And Alan, you look at this game, a huge win for the program. Something they can build on for the rest of the season. And certainly something the fans are really excited about right now. Yeah, so much uncertainty coming out of Baltimore after that 37 points you're lacking. And then you come back here to face the Big 12 uh, preseason favorite in Oklahoma State. West Virginia comes in as a 19.5 point underdog and then pulls out just a, a big win, the kind of win that, that makes you sort of redirect your, uh, your ambitions for the season, really gets the fan base behind the team again when there were a lot of, of scuffling the week before. The fans were great throughout the game in front of a capacity crowd on ESPN, but how surprised were you at the way that West Virginia won this game? How could you not be? I mean, you look at what happened in Baltimore, and I can't go back to any West Virginia two-game span that was uh, any more different than what we saw as far as offensive production and the defense making some plays uh, to keep that thing uh, in line. And also, obviously, the fact that West Virginia slowed down one of the most efficient offenses in the country. Oklahoma State came in 15 out of 15 in the red zone, but couldn't replicate that against the West Virginia defense. Big plays, key plays, controversial plays, over 170 plays in all in this contest. Let's take a look at the highlights. We started off in the opening quarter, and Brandon Golson, the lone sack of the day for either team. Big play there from number two. Yeah, West Virginia bringing some pressure. Golson gets the third down sack to force a punt. West Virginia trying to play some defense here. They struggled early on, but came on strong. But on this play, it was all Josh Stewart and the Cowboys. Whereas the blitz worked on the first series, that time West Virginia went with the zero blitz. And Stewart, who just really raked the Mountaineers last year in Stillwater, gets free again here on an underneath screen. Beats Icky Banks, turns around Darwin Cook, really embarrasses the entire secondary. 73 yards later, the Cowboys are up 7 to nothing. Cowboys get on the board first there, and West Virginia fans had to think maybe this is a sight of what they saw the previous week into Maryland. And we get another look here and just look at Stewart, just a great player, a guy who will be playing on Sundays in a couple years. He's a little guy who, in a conventional offense, might not have a spot, but certainly in the spread attack, he looks pretty good. Clint Trickett had a good day, but this was not one of his good throws. Interception there, Justin Gilbert, another guy who'll be playing on Sundays, a dangerous return man. Didn't see much from him in the return game, but saw a great interception right here. Not a great throw from Clint, but you want to see Ronald Carswell compete and go up and try to make a play on the ball as well. He didn't. Gilbert's the only one. We see a play in the ball here from the defense. Ishmael Banks, a play he will never forget. Call him Icky and look at him go. Picks it off at his own 42. Doesn't just take a knee. 58 yards later, he has a nice run down the sideline. Squeezes in for a really momentum-changing turnover there. Not at the game at 7. What you'll see here on the, on the uh, replay is that he drops off of his guy and, uh, and makes a nice pick. See J.W. Walsh, the quarterback, trying to make a play right there at the goal line. And a great job from Banks. Did not step out of bounds at the three-yard line and really jumped in there. Leaped over the pylon with the football. A great call there from the officials. They made the call on the field after some conversation that it was a touchdown. And you see another look here from the top side. Banks going the distance for the pick six. K.J. Dillon, Jared Barber, and a couple of other players forming a nice blocking line there. This is the part I was talking about earlier. Walsh is looking for the over-the-top receiver, and Banks peels off of his man, makes a nice pick, and from there just lets some of his athleticism take over. First interception return for a touchdown by West Virginia since Pat Miller in 2011. Walsh looking for Brandon Shepard on the play, and Walsh, you see right there, trying to make a play, turning into a defender, but Ishmael Banks, too strong, tied it up, seven apiece, and you get another look from the back side here, Ishmael Banks right there at the three-yard line, leaping, and you see the ball in the goal line right there. Great play. Nice body control. In fast motion, in real time, it looked like he might have stepped out. Even the ref disagreed, but uh, it stands. Here's another great play, and it's uh, Charles Sims. A little, little bit of a, a shake there, and uh, Oklahoma State defenders driving on by. Sims was the leading receiver against Maryland last week with a lot of quick outs like that. 
And in that situation, without a blocker, he winds up picking up 13 yards after making a couple guys miss. There's Clint Trickett looking deep down the field. He took a lot of shots on the oh. day, and Ivan McCartney couldn't come up with it. We've seen it before, and we see it again. Very reminiscent of that night in Oklahoma where Paul Millard laid up a nice deep ball. McCartney's just got to pull that one in. Can't do it over Peterson. Kevin Peterson on the defense here, and you're going to see the football and get right into McCartney. Good defense there by Peterson, kind of swiping at the ball, but that's a catch that McCartney has to make Really trying to catch it with his body instead of his hands. Yeah, and he knew right away that he had given up six. Luckily, you know, West Virginia comes back and, and gets it anyway later in the drive. It's Kevin White. First touchdown as a Mountaineer for number 11, the Juco transfer. Really excited on that play. And a nice catch, but an even better throw here from Clint Trickett. And notice who White beats. He beats Justin Gilbert, the best cornerback for uh, Oklahoma State. Those two will hook up later in the game as well. Here we see... Uh, a nice defensive play from Oklahoma State. Sean Lewis, the linebacker, coming up and putting a lick on Dekeel Shorts. Just called jacked up. Yeah, and Dekeel got jacked up a couple weeks ago on two tough catches as well. So he's earning a reputation for making some of those tough grabs. Trickett kind of putting uh, Shorts out there to, to dry. And this play, though, puts it right between two defenders. And that's Charles Sims, the running back, deep down the field for a catch. And that's crucial because it's one of the first times they've really spraying him downfield. And he makes the, uh, an in-flight adjustment on the ball and catches it between two defenders. A much more difficult catch than some of those he's made at the line of scrimmage. Here we see Jeremy Smith. Rough day for him. Fumble. They called it uh, down on the field, but uh, took a look at the, uh, the replay up in the booth. And right call here was a bang-bang play. It was close, but Isaiah Bruce on the recovery. Yeah, Brandon Golson taking him down, and Smith's knee just a crack, a sliver of daylight before that ball gets loose up top. And Isaiah Bruce on the spot for the recovery. A big turnover for the defense. Here's a field goal. They couldn't score a touchdown, but they do convert it into three points. A 45-yarder from Josh Lambert, a season-long kick for him. Oklahoma State comes back, and they score a touchdown of their own. It's Tracy Moore. They, uh, the few times that West Virginia was susceptible to the pass was, was sort of down the middle where guys got behind the linebacker. Uh, you know, Moore did it there. Really an easy pitch and catch for the, uh, the touchdown to pull the uh, deficit to 17-14. Moore 6'2", 215, big wide receiver. Almost reminds you of a tight end. Clint Trickett looking deep down the field here in his second interception of the day. Threw this one a little bit too short for Kevin White. Yeah, and again, uh, the DB makes a play on the ball before the receiver does. And that's something that, you know, West Virginia's wideouts have to do a better job of uh, he peeled off his man, went and got the ball. Kevin White, a little slow reacting. Tyler Patman on the INT there for Oklahoma State. Here's Clint Trickett trying to make up for that play. He said he, he uh, took a lot of shots deep down the field. Here's another one. Mario Alford on the receiving end of that one. Big catch downfield for Alford coming out of the slot. Uh, this might have been the play where he got injured. He, uh, he left the game with a shoulder injury, and as you can see, a nice lick by the DB coming over. Offered holds on to it, but wound up sitting out most of the second half. A couple plays later, it's Charles Sims with a touchdown there for West Virginia. And West Virginia back up on top, leading right now and looking pretty good, 24-14. Here's J.W. Walsh showing some of his foot speed, getting outside the pocket, and a great throw there on a long third down. The kid can run a little bit. I mean, he's great at the read option, gets outside and makes a play that gives Oklahoma State a chance at the field goal before the half. They just can't convert. One thing JW can't do is kick field goals, and neither can his uh, regular kicker. 24-14 right now is your score. Here's Ronald Carswell. And Carswell had a rough day, to say the least, uh, returning kicks. Boy, once you, you, you struggle to make that catch cleanly, you just got to get up field and get what you can get. There's no excuse for uh, a kickoff getting run back to his own three. He actually gave ground there and really put West Virginia in a hole to start the second half. There's J.W. Walsh looking for some more points. They'll get it. They get on the board here once again. Jeremy Seaton, tight end for Oklahoma State, draws within three, 24-21. Now you got West Virginia backed up again on its own goal line after uh, Jordan Thompson fair caught a punt back at the three. But Charles Sims with a nice 20-plus yard run there. As you can see, a little penetration makes a guy miss in the hole, and then the rest is, is all on him. Uh, he didn't have a huge day running the ball, but what he did get 
uh, which amounted to about 60 plus yards, he got pretty much on his own. I think it was his best game as a Mountaineer. Clearly, you look at the receiving end of what he did and that nice goal line touchdown. Here's Ronald Carswell. Had a quiet day, but a big catch right here. Ronald Carswell, a deep threat for West Virginia, continues to show his speed, Alan. He does. He's got great wheels, probably the best wheels of, uh, of any receiver on the team, either him or Alford. He's just got to make sure that he makes some better plays when the ball is in the air. How about Carl Joseph here? As you see, J.W. Wallace really put it up there, lay it right up for his wide receiver, but couldn't come down with it. Credit Joseph. And that was a third down throw. Could have uh, forced a field goal. West Virginia flagged for a personal foul face mask on an underneath route, sort of an incidental contact situation that makes it first and goal for the Cowboys. And they nearly punch it in right here, but Darwin Cook coming up big. That's how a safety is supposed to step up in the hole and smack somebody in the face. I mean, that's a, that's a momentum stopper right there. Cookie stopping it to force second down. You never know what's going to happen if you keep him out of the end zone. Remember, it's 24-21, as you can see, the bottom of your screen at home. And here's a great play. Defensive backs were solid throughout the day for West Virginia. But this was one of the biggest plays of the day. Credit the front seven for West Virginia. Yeah, after throwing it on second down, which seemed a little, a little strange to me, they run it on third and one, and Dontrell Hyman just blows it up. Five-yard loss to take down Smith. The best part is, where West Virginia's Oklahoma State misses the tying field goal after that. Off the upright and coming back, trick it to, who is it, Jordan Thompson, the squirt out there, making a great diving catch, one of the best plays, of, definitely a Sports Center top ten nominee. And, see a couple looks here as Clint Trickett just throwing it out there and Jordan Thompson doing the rest. That's a big catch in traffic. It picked up a uh, third down, helped West Virginia run some more clock as they're clinging to a three-point lead. A uh, squirt known for making plays during the spring game. Finally comes up with a big catch during fall when it really counts. Not sure where he's been all season long, but Clint Trickett here moving outside that pocket, extending the play. It's something that Ford Childress and Paul Millard struggled with through the first four weeks. Trickett did not struggle. Here's Lambert on a kick. Make it 27-21. Big kick there for West Virginia. J.W. Walsh trying to bring the Cowboys back for one last chance. But Darwin Cook, another big play from 25, the senior. Walsh uh, has Tracy Moore open, but as he rolls out, just not as accurate as Clint Trickett was on the run. Overthrows him. A really easy pick there. As Darwin said, that was just an ugly throw. He's trying to do the cookie dance. He wants to do the cookie monster dance, but just too many teammates mobbing him. Big turnover there to basically clinch the ball game. Have a lot of fun right there. West Virginia takes down Oklahoma State. It's time now for our pictures of the week. And Alan uh, Icky Banks, huge weekend for him. I think a play that he will never forget. Probably not. Uh, the big tide turner early in the first quarter. West Virginia had already fallen behind 7 nothing when Icky makes his first career interception. And bear in mind, he only had one in high school. So this is really not <laughs> this is a rare occasion for him and got the crowd involved and squared it all at seven. Even though Ishmael Banks plays defense, he showed some offense right there with that score. I'm going to look at an offensive player, Clint Trickett. Had to be one of the stories of this contest, but how about the fact that he shows some mobility? Yeah, he's not Pat White, but he can move outside the pocket, and he had some opportunities to throw the ball down the field. We saw big play after big play from the arm of Clint Trickett. Mountaineer fans really enjoyed this one, especially with the results, but uh, moving forward this week, Big question mark is Clint Trickett, whether or not he will be okay. He took a bunch of shots in this game. Shoulders a little bit bummed right now. The big question mark heading into this week is how he will be able to respond and whether or not he'll be able to play against Baylor. That's true. It's something you're going to have to track daily throughout the week. The trainers are going to be on him. He's going to be getting treatment every day. It's all about soreness, pain tolerance, and range of motion. You know, Obviously, that's his throwing arm. He's got to be able to, uh, to maintain the zip on the ball. He did a good job late in the game doing that after taking some pain medication, apparently. But uh, just a matter of how that plays out throughout the week. Uh, obviously, Ford Childress may be not there as a backup option with the torn pec. So on Sunday night, when they went through a light practice, Paul Millard was the only healthy quarterback in camp. So you might have to turn back to the uh, season opening starter with Paul Millard being the only healthy quarterback. But you look at the team after the victory over number 11, Oklahoma State. You have to think that West Virginia, they're heading back to another bowl game this year. That's at least, if you had to project it after this weekend, you would think that they'd be able to get to six wins. Yeah, coming out of the Maryland game, that looked like a, like a dream, really, because it was hard to find six winnable games. They get one against Oklahoma State. Suddenly, two of the best teams in the Big 12 Conference 
they've already taken care of sort of a front-loaded front -loaded schedule. So now, yeah, you could easily see six, seven, maybe even eight or nine wins, depending on what kind of momentum they carry forward. Moving forward, the only game that really is in question whether or not they can maybe win is this weekend's game against Baylor, a team coming off a of bye week, a top in the country right now in scoring, great quarterback, a really strong running back, arguably the best running back in the entire Big 12 Conference. Baylor, they're led by offense, but they're really a team, good special teams, good defense, and a really good head coach in Art Bryles. Yeah, the, the transformation he's made with that program over the last few years is pretty amazing because they used to be uh, sub-Kansas. I mean, they were, they were really bad. They still had the longest losing streak in conference history, which, you know, Kansas is starting to challenge. But what you've got now in Waco is a situation where a lot of teams, a lot of people rather, thought they were the dark horse team in the league. So far, that looks like a good call. Uh, a lot of explosiveness on offense, and that's why they're opening as a 27-point favorite at home against West Virginia. So really not a lot of love for the Mountaineers, despite what they pulled off against Oklahoma State. Tough team to predict is West Virginia after the 37-0 blowout loss to Maryland. They come back seven days later, take down the number 11 Oklahoma State Cowboys, 30-21. to Really, you can go anywhere on this one. You have to think, though, they're going to compete with Baylor. It's just a different question whether or not they'll be able to pull off the victory on the road. But you look back to Oklahoma, a team right now that's ranked 11th in the country. They competed with them on the road. They did. Oklahoma, of course, goes into South Bend, gets a big win over Notre Dame, kind of carries the Big 12 mantle as far as out-of-conference goes. That bodes well for West Virginia because two conference games against two really good football teams, they've been in a position to win one, and they took care of the other one. So I'm really interested to see what sort of mindset and what sort of um, you know, strength of will they carry into Waco this weekend. Should be an interesting contest, but right now the biggest question mark is Clint Trickett and whether or not he'll be able to start on Saturday against Baylor. For the latest news and notes on your West Virginia Mountaineers, log on to wvmetronews.com. For Alan Taylor, I'm Justin Hoff. This has been The Takeaway on wvmetronews.com. Thanks for watching.